Hello, my name is Eva and I run the account Notation is Great on Twitter. So today I'm going to talk about the notation of troubadour and troubadour music. So who were the troubadours? Well, the troubadours lived between the mid 12th and the late 13th century and they composed this large repertoire of monophonic secular song in vernacular languages as opposed to Latin. So troubadours wrote in Languedoc or Occitan, which was spoken in the south of present-day France, and Trouvers wrote in Languedoil, which was spoken in present-day northern France. So the music of the Trouvers and Troubadours was typically compiled in songbooks or ch chansonniers, which you have a number of different Troubadours as part of the same volume, and some of them, as you can see here, were very lavishly decorated. And today I'm going to look at a song by a troubadour called Thibaut de Navarre. So he was both the king of Navarre in present-day Spain and a troubadour. Troubadour and troubadour music typically used the so-called neumes, which is the notation system that was used for Gregorian chant. And I'll make a video about that at some point. So neumes were basically either isolated notes or groups of two or more notes, two, three, four sometimes, although I don't think we have any example of that here. And basically what you have is one neume per syllable, okay? So if you have more than one note sung on the same syllable, these would be notated together as a neume. So different neumes have different names and as I said, I'll, I will make another video where I explain that in a bit more detail. But I would like to dedicate some attention to a particular neum because sometimes people have a bit of trouble reading it. So this is the so-called pes, meaning foot in Latin, and you can see an example of that towards the middle of the first line. So here the lower note is read first, okay? So you start reading this neum uh, with the lower note. So what else do we have here? Well, we have a five line staff, which we should be familiar with already. And if you look at the left hand side of the staff, you'll see that we have a clef here. Okay, this is a C clef. So in troubadour and trouber music, normally you only find either a C or an F clef. But you need to be very careful because sometimes the clef might change from one line to another without any warning. And this is the case here. Okay, so here in the second line, the C clef is on the fourth line. And then towards the end of that line, it changes again to the third line. So we now know how to read the pitch of the notes in this song, but now you might say, so what about the rhythm and pulse? Well, this is one of the most controversial topics in troubadour and troubadour music, because the neumes per se don't really give you any indication of rhythm. And so different scholars have developed a number of different theories that I'm going to try and summarize in a minute. But before I do that, I would like to talk about theories in musicological research, because sometimes I feel that uh, there isn't really an awareness of how all of this works. So how do these theories come about? Are they, can they be proven or are they just opinions by different people? Well, the reality with medieval music is that we don't really have a lot of sources. Okay, so we have some manuscripts, we have some written accounts like treatises or uh, descriptions of musicians playing music in different contexts. We have iconography, so drawings, paintings, sculpture, etc. We can also sometimes make some comparisons with other musical traditions, but this isn't really a lot to reconstruct a whole musical tradition to the smallest detail. Okay, so musicologists have to use all of this evidence that is available to try and find out how things actually worked in the Middle Ages. So one of the theories about rhythm in troubadour and troubadour music says that this was a very highly rhythmical repertoire. So at around this time we have other repertoires which were quite rhythmical as well. And so this theory says that troubadour and troubadour music was part of this, of this broader movement. So these other repertoires developed notation systems where rhythm was notated in a quite precise way. And there are some similarities with troubadour and troubadour music in that they both used basically neumes. So this theory says that troubadour and troubadour music should be 
interpreted read in the same way as notation in these other repertoires. So this is called menstrual notation and I'll make a video about it uh, at some point so I, I'm not going to go into this uh, into great detail. Another theory says that rhythm in troubadour and trouver music was isosyllabic, okay, meaning that each syllable would be the same length or roughly the same length. So you might think of each note as a beat. Okay, and if you have more than one note per syllable, you have to fit them into one beat. So that first line could be something like Okay. Now there's another theory which is called declamatory rhythm. And basically this theory focuses on the connection between troubadour and troubadour music and poetry. Okay, so in this repertoire, poetry was very important. So the poetry of Troubadour and the Troubadour repertoire is very sophisticated. And the music, in a way, was thought of as um, a vehicle for the poetry to really shine. So the researchers who support this theory say that the rhythm was flexible, but it should try and imitate the declamation or the recitation of poetry. So again, you might think of each syllable as roughly the same length, but within this framework, some syllables might be shortened or uh, elongated to just make it more expressive, to give a certain emphasis to certain words. So finally, there's another theory which focuses on the stressed syllables of each line. So as you might know, in French and Occitan, some syllables are stressed and some are not. And basically, this theory says that this is what you need to to take into account to figure out the rhythm. So this theory suggests a sort of a six, eight rhythm. So what you, something like one, two, one, two, one, two, etc. So one stressed and one unstressed uh, beat or fraction of a beat. And basically you have to feed the stressed syllables on the stressed beat and the unstressed syllables on the unstressed beat or fraction of the beat, okay? So obviously in order to do that, you need to know how these languages work, Occitan, Old French, you need to know where the stress syllables are. So there are a number of resources online which can help with that, but really you need to go and study the language quite intensely. And here you can see um, how I try to apply this theory to the first line of the, of the song, okay? So the first syllable, li, so that's the article, the, so this is unstressed, so this is why I'm starting on an upbeat. Roussignon, so here the first syllable is stressed and so is the last syllable, so I've tried to fit this in within the 6-8 uh, pattern. Then the syllable tu, so shan tu, in this word shan is the stressed syllable, tu is unstressed, and as you can see, there are three notes in this syllable too, so I've tried to fit them in in the unstressed beat, so meaning I have to write down a triplet. Now, this theory doesn't always tell you, so would these three notes be transcribed as a triplet, or would it be a different lengths? It's not clear, you know, so very often you have to try and fit them in as best as you can. So there's one last thing that I wanted to talk about briefly, which is that you might have listened to troubadour and troubadour performances or even seen iconography where troubadours and troubadours are playing an instrument. They are accompanying themselves with an instrument. However, this is not in the notation that we've seen. So the notation that we've seen consists of just the vocal line. So how can we know how the accompaniment was played or where is this accompaniment notated? Well, the truth is that in medieval music, these accompaniments are not notated. So again, we need to resort to other sources to try and reconstruct how these accompaniments might have sounded. And again, there's a number of options that you can see in CDs uh, and live performances from bourdons to preludes and postludes and interludes based on the melody in, in some way. But again, uh, there will be a number of, of different theories, different approaches to this. Okay, so that's all you need to know for the moment about troubadour and troubadour music. 
and in the comments box below I will post a link where you can access a number of different Troubadour and Trouber manuscripts in case you want to start your own research or transcriptions and also if you are in a position to do so and if you feel you've learned something from this video I would like to invite you to consider making a donation to one or more charities or funds dedicated to supporting musicians in these difficult times of the COVID-19 crisis. So and you can see a couple of things here. So other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned something. Thank you and goodbye.